One of the arguments that you'll hear quite often in the debate about climate change is that CO2 is only 0.042% of the atmosphere. And that's such a trace amount that it couldn't possibly have any significant effect on climate or words to that effect. To be sure, that's not very much. And in fact, CO2 concentration in the atmosphere comes a distant fifth after water vapor. Even doubling the concentration would only result in a very tiny fraction of the air that you breathe. But as with many things in nature, it's not the size of the dog in the fight that matters, it's the size of the fight in the dog. Very small concentrations of some gases can be really important. Just 0.0135% of hydrogen cyanide in the atmosphere would kill everyone within 30 minutes. And unfortunately, that effect on humans has been tested and proven many times in the past. On the flip side, where very small concentrations of gases could benefit humans, is ozone. Even in the ozone layer, where its concentration is highest, it's only 0.0008% of the atmosphere. But without it, UV light streaming in unimpeded from the sun would smash apart every organic molecule on the surface of the Earth until we closely resembled the planet Mars. So tiny amounts of some gases can be really important. And CO2 is one of those really important gases. Life on this planet wouldn't be possible without it. Animals breathe it out and plants breathe it in. But too much or too little can be a problem. CO2 in the atmosphere keeps the planet warm. And in fact, if we didn't have any CO2 at all, the average temperature of the Earth would probably be something like five degrees instead of the current 14. We'd be in a permanent ice age and there'd be no plants left for the animals to eat, including us. Too much CO2 can also be a problem. But how much is too much? Fortunately, unlike hydrogen cyanide, CO2 isn't a poison to humans. In fact, you're probably breathing something like two to five times the average atmospheric concentration right now without any ill effect. Just a quick note here on the units that get used for CO2 concentration in the atmosphere. Up to now, we've been talking about percent and 1% is one hundredth of something. And CO2 at 0.042% is a very small and unwieldy number, so most scientists prefer to use parts per million. And 0.042% is equivalent to 420 parts per million. It's usually shortened to ppm for convenience. Another way to think about that is 420 CO2 molecules amongst a million molecules of all the gases in the atmosphere. So 420 ppm is the average, but it actually varies quite a lot. If you go out into your garden in the middle of the night, it'll probably be 500 ppm or more, because all the animals are still breathing it out, but the plants have stopped taking it in because there's no sunlight to help them process it. When the sun comes up, the plants start gobbling up all the excess CO2, and by midday, the concentration in the atmosphere will have fallen well below the average. Indoors, in a crowded meeting room without any plants, the CO2 concentration can rise as high as 2000 ppm without harming anyone inside. You can even save someone's life by giving them your breath at a concentration of around 40,000 ppm. The potential problem with CO2 is its ability to absorb infrared radiation on its way back to space and convert it into heat in the atmosphere, the so-called greenhouse effect. That effect is important even at 420 ppm. And taken to extreme levels, it could be a real problem. The planet Venus is about the same size as the Earth and just a little bit closer to the Sun. But it has a very thick atmosphere composed almost entirely of CO2. And that CO2 slows down the escape of solar energy to a point where the surface temperature is hot enough to melt lead. The Earth isn't going to get to that extreme anytime soon. But how much CO2 in the atmosphere could be a problem for us here? That's the trillion dollar question that underpins all of the current climate debate. And it'll be a focus for most of the future videos on this channel. 
So the tiny fraction of 0.042% CO2 in the atmosphere really is important. And when someone says it isn't, you know that they've either become frustrated with the complexity of the debate, or they're just trolling to get a reaction. Either way, they've stopped listening, so further discussion is probably a waste of time. It's probably best just to exit the discussion politely and leave a link to this video so that they can take a look at it later on when they've cooled off a bit.